So yeah, mate, anyway, if you could just have a quick word to your bosses for me and see if they could uh, lift the curse, that would be, that would be incredible. Alright, we don't have to mock me with the trophy, Jesus. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain, welcome to Season 12, Episode 3 of The Impossible Dream with Barla Town, and today we look to beat the Iron Brew Curse in the first round as we play Inverness, Caledonian Thistle, and then we get our Champions League group stage underway against Inter Milan, and that is probably the toughest game as we go to, uh, we go to Italy for that one. But a little bit to catch you up on since last episode, and starting with the training facilities, we have upgraded um, our senior training facilities, which means we basically have state-of-the-art everything, exceptional academy coaching and recruitment. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is work on the stadium so our corporate facilities can improve. Um, but essentially, off the field, we are as good as we can be. Um, so that is that is absolutely brilliant. We are as good as Barcelona, as Real Madrid, as Manchester City. They None of them have anything go for us in terms of uh, off-the-field coaching facilities. Um, now we just need to use them, and hopefully that those wonder kids are just, just a season or two away for us. Uh, now a little bit to catch up on in the transfer market as well. The window has closed, but we have had a departure of René Felge. Um, he has gone off to uh, to Reims, I think you pronounce it, in France. He was a good player for us, but ultimately he's not WAGS qualified, so there was no real game time for him. So we got a quarter of a mil for him, uh, but I think crucially we also got a 50% uh, sell-on clause. And I think that's important because, I, as I said, I think he is a good player. And you can already see he's worth uh, just, short, just shy of a million, so... If he does move on, he's only 22, so there's still potentially room for him to improve as well. If he does improve, I think that his next transfer fee could be could be well worth uh, a little bit of cash for us. But he was a good player. I think he got goal of the season with a stunning free kick one season as well. Um, reliable goal scorer for us, but like I say, ultimately just didn't quite play enough. Um, so we've cashed in on him. Uh, and the other one is one for the future. We've signed a right back from PSV. You can see here 850 grand. Uh, he will arrive in January after his 18th birthday. Um, but a good defensive player. Positioning is not too bad. He's not too bad physically. Maybe a little bit of work can be done on agility and acceleration. But ultimately, he's 17. The scouts like him. I like him. Um, mentally, he's quite strong as well where he needs to be uh, for a defender. So he lacks a little bit attacking uh, uh, in dribbling and crossing. But I'm hoping I'm hoping he'll be a good player for us. And I think this could mean the end of Billy Cameron um, as sort of the young prospect right back. Yeah, because I don't think Billy Cameron again not Wags qualified, so I don't think I think we'll look we'll need to give that uh, that game time to to old Mart Noska here. Um, all right, there are two games to catch you up on since last episode. So let's have a look at those. The first one was against Afen Lido. Robert Riola gave us an early lead. Anthony Roda got his first Barley goal before Marcus Wade made it three 0 inside fifteen minutes. Roda crossed for Riola to get his second. And Wade made it 5-0 at half-time. Wade crossed for Riola to complete his hat-trick just after the break. Before Ben Evans got our seventh. So a really, really good performance this one. Riola with the hat-trick. Rhoda with his first goal for the club. Marcus Wade with a double and Ben Evans with a goal as well. Marcus Wade, we are going to give him a crack at 50. Uh, I think he's earned it. Uh, Damien Allmark has just not quite been doing it for us. It'll free Allmark up to play sort of as, as lead the wags line for us. Um, but we are going to give Marcus Marcus Wade a crack at 50 this year. And he got two in this one. So that's a promising start. Next up, we play Dark Kind of Fawn again in the league. The only goal came early through Marcus Wade. So yeah, just the one goal, Marcus Wade with it again. We scored early, we, we essentially, you can see from the match stats, controlled the game, but for some reason the players just looked nervous and anxious the, the entire game. So um, it's one of those, we'll take the three points and run. Um, that should have possibly been more. We can see Marcus Wade, if we have a look here, he has a three from three. Obviously we know he needs to be going at a quicker rate than that. We will give him a chance. He's proven himself to be a, a good goal scorer in the league before, so we'll give him a little bit more time before we call it on him. But uh, yeah, he does need to pick up that scoring rate. We have a quick look at what all that means for the league as we put that to one side this episode. Um, four games played, four games won. Bangor and Clonelli are both ahead of us right now. The New Saints are struggling only nine points from their seven games. Um, but like I said, we put that to one side. We've got a home draw against Flint Town in the League Cup next up. 
Uh, next, and that's for the Wags, of course. But we host Inverness in the Iron Brew, and then we will begin our Champions League campaign. But let's have a look at what we're doing here against Inverness. It's not the easiest game and on paper. Uh, we're definitely heavy favourites for us. So if we have a quick look here, Inverness, they're in League One. So that's obviously not the best Inverness team uh, that they've had in recent seasons. They're a Mirko Boland coach team. Uh, a decent, so I'd say actually a very good manager for League One in, in Scotland. But... Um, yeah, anyway, uh, a balanced standard style of play. We're expecting this sort of a formation from them, something a little bit more on the defensive side. You can see that they lost to Kelty Hearts last time out. Oh, how the mighty have fallen in Vaness. Um, we can see there they're a little bit narrow, both the way they attack and defend. Passing network is is there in their key passes from that game as well. And this is the team we're sending out. Now, obviously, we need to favor the Champions League game. So Tennis Kovic goes in goal. It's Dale Morgan. He's sort of the next, the, basically he's the backup left back now for uh, for Montgomery with the uh, Norrington Davies injury. So we'll give him the game in this one with O'Halloran, KDH and Billy Cameron, uh, the man who is in all likelihood out the door this January or at the end of the season once uh, the new young kid comes in. It's Sam York and Yamaguchi in midfield. Rhoda gets the game on wide right with Dixon and Riola. All Mark goes up top. Let's hope he has his goal scoring boots on. So here we go, they are coming out that little bit more defensively lined up, which is which is fine. Uh, Gomez says encourage the team. Boys, just keep the run going for me, please. Some calm, we have faith. And let's see if we can get one over on this curse. While waiting for the game to start too, a massive apology. There was no episode yesterday. Basically what happened is that I was recording the episode uh, sort of just at the start of the, uh, of the inter-game. Um... I got a notification pop up for my sister's birthday and it just kind of crashed my whole laptop. So happy birthday to my sister. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I hadn't saved it after the after the Inverness game. And I always save it, you know, uh, in between games, whether it be after this sort of after one or before the next one, just because, you know, stuff can happen during a game. And I don't think it was the game. I think it was just my laptop. Uh, and then basically I just didn't have time to, to re-record everything yesterday. So um, massive apology. We'll try this again. I'll save it after this game. And then hopefully if something does happen again, then we don't have to do the whole thing. Here we go. Good ball down and Olmar sticks it away. Seventh minute, fourth goal of the season. Anthony Roda with a big assist there as well. But that's what we like to see. If, or maybe Olmar, he's been dropped from the league side and he's going to get his head out of his backside and start scoring some goals for us again. Good ball forward from Sam York. Roda climbs to win the header and Olmar gets there first and tucks it away brilliantly. 1-0. To Bala Town. Now we've seen before in the Iron Brew, we can have a 2-0 lead and we can still we can still have the, the curse come back and haunt us. So uh, we're not going to get too comfortable yet, but certainly a nice place to be. Let's demand a little bit more. And we've got an injury to Billy Cameron. That's going to mean Griffith McMenemy comes on to play out there wide right. Which isn't ideal, but he is the Wags, uh, the Wags right back. So we, we know he can do it. Um and uh, and yeah. Here we go, Sam York with a free kick. Decent. Ormark is there. Ormark, it's just over. It's Oh, it's come back off the crossbar, has it? And Jake O'Halloran has tucked it away. He doesn't get many. His first of the season, Ewan Dixon's got an assist in there somehow as well. No idea what has happened there. I thought it, it was an Ormark header initially. It's the Ginger O'Halloran that's got the goal. It's flapped around and it's, it's just a scramble. And you can just see O'Halloran's boot stick in there. To tap it across the line. It's not a classic. It's not going to feature in goal of the season. I wouldn't have thought. I hope not. If that's one of our best goals this year. We're in serious trouble. <laughs> but uh, yeah. There we go. 2-0. We'll take them however they come. They don't draw pictures on the scoreboard do they? They just add a goal next to your name. Patience brings it forward. Morgan showing a little not patience in that one. And Tennis Kovic. Let's say he had it covered shall we? Um... And yeah, I mean, 2-0 again. We've blown 2-0 leads in the Iron Brew before, but I'll I'll take it, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll be able to see this out. We do have, obviously, some youngsters on the bench. If it gets to the point where it's looking comfortable, then we might look to bring the likes of Sam Evans and Bono on to play uh, to get some game time in this one. It has to be an assertive boys. Don't get complacent. Um, we won't mention the curse to them. I'm sure they're all very well aware of it. But uh, we try not to bring it up too much in training ahead of these these uh, Iron Brew ties. Give him a little bit of faith. And let's hopefully get back out there. Who's not playing well there? KDH. Let's see if we can fire him up a little bit. And we have a kickoff highlight. Perfect. This is just what we wanted. Um, can we win that? Oh, we can't. And are we going to... It's the curse. It's the curse. Griffin McMenemy gets beaten. Edwards, he's going to score. No, it goes over. Concentrate, boys, please. Concentrate. 
Um, I mean, it's been relatively comfortable, but we've just seen enough from us to know that we can we can ship a goal here. There's a cross in. Riola's there. Riola sticks it away. That's 3-0, and hopefully that should be that. I'd like to back us not to concede three goals to us, a League One, uh, a League One Scottish team, especially when we're playing at our place. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we go here, and three 0 up as well. Um, all right, it might be time. Yamaguchi's looking a little bit tired there, so let's get him off. Let's get Sam Evans on, uh, and let's get Bono on for Roder as well. Um, Road is someone who might be useful for us in Europe, so we'll, uh, we don't want to overstretch his legs in this one. If we can help it, let's give him some more praise. Griffith McManamy is not having the best time out there at right back, but he's not a natural right back either. I mean, he can do it, um, but he's he's certainly not a natural at it. But this is, this. I tell you what, this is as comfortable, I think, as we've seen in Iron Brew in a little while. But of course, we saw this last season. We were looking really good, weren't we? And then we got to the semifinals and just sort of indescribably just choked. Um, but can we get a fourth here? Dixon back to Morgan. Morgan with a ball. Riola's in space. Crosses in back post and Bono. Can't keep his header down. But a comfortable, a comfortable 3-0 it looks like. Or is it? We've still got about 40 seconds, 50 seconds to play here even. There's 60 seconds in a minute. Aussie villain, you muppet. Sam Evans gets it forward. It's headed away. Inverness comes forward now. What we don't want to do is concede a late goal. Come on. Can we get a block in? It's towards Tennis Kovic. A Superman save from Tennis Kovic. One for the cameras. 30-odd seconds to play. It's becoming a long old highlight. Throws it out there for York in acres of space. He gets it out wide for Riola. All mark is lurking. Riola goes past one like he's not there. We've got a man at the back post as well. Robert Riola. Oh. Maybe a little bit selfish there. Pushes it past the far post. And that should be that. There it is. Well, there's no such thing as an easy win in the Iron Brew for us. But that's about as comfortable as we've seen. A really, really good performance from us there. Good performance, boys. Don't let it go to your heads. We'll take it. So there we go. Bala Town secure the victory. It's good to see... Um, not as good as we think, mate. We smashed you to pieces. Three to four weeks for Billy Cameron. That's not ideal as the backup right back. Um, we've got Glenn Torin in the fourth uh, fourth round. Sorry, they're third in the Northern Irish League. So that's not the easiest. I don't think we could have got... It's good to see Dixon having a good game again. He's been a little bit quiet, but... Um, yeah, he was, he was quite good in that one, wasn't he? And we have a re rearranged fixture. Guys, wait right there. Champions League is next. We go to Inter Milan. I'm Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist here at the San Siro, ahead of the opening game of the Champions League group stages between Inter Milan and Bala Town. Now, the Italians are currently top of Serie A, so if Aussie villains men want anything from this one, I hope they've been saying their prayers. Okay, welcome back. Now, unfortunately, things haven't got off to a good start in the Youth Champions League this year for Chris Venables and the under-19s. They've gone down 3-1 to Inter Milan. Uh, looked like it was a relatively even game, not so much in terms of possession. I think we might be seeing a little bit more of that <laughs> in times to come here. But, um, yeah, shame. It's a shame. But away from home, you know, it's not the worst result. Hopefully, they'll, uh, they'll kick on and, and manage to get some good results uh, moving forward. But... This is all about the seniors. They are not. We are not the favourites. Ever uh, Everton, who are we playing? Inter are the favourites. Uh, both teams are in excellent form. Diego Simeone is the Inter Milan manager. Now they are currently sitting top of Serie A. So early days, yes, but still, um, they're, they're obviously a very good team. Uh, Diego Simeone is, of course, a very good manager as well. Uh, they're a balanced, direct style of play. Uh, we're expecting something along these lines. Uh, we can see they beat Spezia. Uh, Spezia. Is it, maybe? Uh, anyway, they beat them 2-1 last time out. We can see there they used the, pretty much the tie, entire width of the field when they attack. Um, passing network is there. Key passes as well. And this is the team that we're sending out. Um, it's the European formation, just a little bit more conservative with the wing back. So, Tennis Kovic in goal. It's Montgomery, Juan, me, Goddard, Tony, and Ignatievich as the back five. It's Brewerton, it's Quinn, and it is Tommy Williamson in midfield. It's McMire and Freshie up top. We've got a strong bench as well. O'Halloran, Morgan, the backup left back, as well as Gibbons, Rhoda, Riola, and the Armenian. We have options. Let's hope. Let's hope we don't need them. So we can see the way they're lining up as expected, which is, I mean, it looks like a very defensively uh, set up game, doesn't it? So let's hope we can ground out a nil-nil, perhaps. Uh, Gomez has encouraged the team. I think we've learned in Europe, uh, there's, where the underdog, show them what you've got. Just take the pressure right off of them, um, and hopefully. 
hopefully get a good result as a good performance as a result of it. And here we go, here we go, back in the Champions League at the San Siro, and hopefully anything we can take from this game. I think the general consensus um, after the draw seemed to be that Inter was, was the toughest team, so anything we can take, even if it's just not a hiding <laughs> uh, to help the goal difference, anything we take from this game will be a, a, just a big bonus. Um, what we don't want to do, of course, is end up on the end of a bit of a bit of a hiding and then have that hurt our uh, our confidence going forward and it's off the crossbar. Boys, 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 let's concentrate, please. Have we dodged a bullet there? Is that a sign it's going to be our day? Possibly not. Ignatiovic, a throw comes in. What can he do? Can he get a tackle in a block in? Edge of the area, too much space, too much time, and we were punished for it. Kenneth Taylor opens the scoring for them. Um, and that didn't quite look right, did it? So much, so much space. Where is, is that, is Brewer, Brewerton's number six, isn't he? No, that's Tony. Brewerton was there. It's just, there was too much space there, wasn't there? I wonder if I need to have a look at defending throw-ins um, in the European formation, if that's maybe something. Let's give him a calm down. We're looking nervous and furious and anxious and all those sorts of things. Uh, look at that again. There's, there's no. This we've got to go and close him down. It's not right. It's Brewerton on a man marking job. I wonder. Uh, Montgomery gets the header clear there. We'll have to go and I'll check that after this highlight. Hopefully we're not going to get punished for it. Where we're a shambles. We're an absolute shambles. Um, all right. That's it's horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. What something we're doing defensively isn't quite uh, working there. Um, Do we need to go and counter press? Maybe there is so much, so much time and space. Let's do a little bit of live coaching here, shall we? So we've got Williamson there, one me Ignatievich. I mean Ignatievich's positioning is questionable. Tony Quinn. See Quinn is too far back as well. See, this is the problem. That's the problem, isn't it? We've got. Our two central midfielders sitting back in the back line. So why is that happening? Ignatievich needs to be out there. We're in abs oh, we're in absolute shambles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven men in the box. Marking two. That doesn't need to happen, does it? Um Alright, I'm gonna check check this, I'll edit it out and then we'll come back. Okay, I couldn't see too much wrong with it. What I've done, we are sitting a little bit deep because they're a counter-attacking side, but I'm we're going to try and, and sort of press them. I'm wondering if we if we've just got the midfielders basically sitting in the defensive line, and that's that's the issue. So we'll try that. Um, maybe we need to push out a little bit, but the fact that they were a uh, a counter-attacking team, I thought sitting deep would maybe prevent them from having anything to counter into. This seems to be working so far, doesn't it? Um, so that might be something that we've learnt from this. At least we'll take something away. If we are sitting deep, uh, we do need to look to to push out and, and close them down. But this is looking better. Ignatievich, can he find Freshy in the area? Goes back to Brewerton. We can probably take his cap off. Dunce cap. We don't need to highlight you anymore. Good ball out there for Ignatievich. Can he find a cross into the box? There's Big Mac. Big Mac. Oh, it's off the cross. It's off the post. Outside of the post for Big Mac. He was inches away from bringing us back into this game at 2-1 at the break. But... That change has definitely helped, hasn't it? The other game in the group is currently tied nil-nil. Uh, let's say, let's say unlucky, boys. Let's say unlucky. Try and build a little bit of faith here. Um, and let's get back out there. Let's get creative. And let's see if we can turn things around in the second half. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit annoyed at myself now that we didn't fix that a little bit quicker perhaps Montgomery's not having a great game but as I've said before we don't have any other options at left back well we do we have Dale Morgan but he's not he's not of the quality to face Inter Milan that's for sure um there's a ball over the top can we get back and get a block in here they don't have too many men forward with him cross comes in Mancy is there that's three nil it's three long shots um let's try show some passion See, this is more what I was 
trying to get us to do to not give them space to counter-attack into, but maybe Ignatievic has just dove in a little bit there. I think we are seeing signs that Ignatievic is not quite good enough for this very, very top level. Um, and that's not necessarily his fault. It's just the reality that, you know, it, it, he's good to a, you know, to a certain level and if, and against lesser teams, even in Europe. He's still a very good player. Can we get to that? No, we can't. Uh, they look as though they may... Oh, Exhibit A, Your Honour. Um, oh, 4 nil seems a little harsh. But there it is. Federico Chiesa with his first goal of the season. Maybe we shouldn't be attacking, but... I always think if you set up defensively, you know, then, then you do want to have some sort of uh, some sort of threat, but that's clearly not working. Um, all right, let's make some changes here. Ignatievic, I'm going to try. We're, we're pro arguably, we're a centre-back short of where I'd like to be as well, but let's get Lee Goddard out there. He can play as a, as a wing-back. Um, let's get the Armenian on. Let's take Freshy off, who hasn't really worked. Um... Advanced playmaker for you, please, Mr. Armenian. And is there anything else we want to do? Possibly not. Possibly not. Actually, you know what I wouldn't mind trying? Um, I wouldn't mind trying Rhoda as a wingback. He's got tackling. Positioning's not ideal. But let's just try him. We've got nothing to lose in this game now anyway. Uh, the Armenian for Freshy, And let's make that change. Um, yeah, let's just try it and see what happens. We've got, as I said, nothing to lose at this point anyway. Let's try a demand more. We don't really want to go any more than 4 nil down. I think 4 nil is even slightly harsh on us, but... Yeah, I think we definitely need to we definitely need to, to go actively looking to replace Ignatievich now, I think. I mean, that young kid, the Dutch kid that we have coming in, he's not, he's not quite ready yet. Is that Rhoda getting caught out there? I think he's... No, it's the Armenian. The Armenian has a Fellaini haircut. Looks like he's got a bit of an afro there. Um, but yeah, like I say, this is obviously disappointing. Um, we haven't been good enough defensively. We've definitely improved. I think the one thing is that when we when we sort of sat deep but went to push out and close them down, we we, we definitely improved. What we did see at that point, though, is we saw Ignatievich get caught out twice, basically. Once for the shot and once for the penalty. Um, but I think we have to say that's not good enough, isn't it? So useful Bala Town come unstuck. It's it, the result. I think is fair enough. The, the performance and the actual score, I think, is a little bit disappointing. And added to that disappointment is the fact that 92nd minute Athletic Bilbao have gone and beaten Benfica. So that ideally that game would have finished as a draw for us. So that leaves us bottom of the group, um, and in a, I wouldn't say a little bit of trouble, but. I mean, Inter is going to be the class of the group, you would imagine. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And we'll be back next time for Barry Town in the league. And then it will be Benfica in the Champions League at home to them. And that's already, given that they lost their first game at home, that's already looking as though it's a little bit of a must win, isn't it? Take care.